welcome to this lesson in mastering statistics and probability here we're gonna talk about identifying the length of a confidence interval so first let's define what is confidence level so a confidence level refers to the percentage of all possible samples that can be expected to include the true population parameter the confidence level of an interval estimate of a parameter is the probability that the interval estimate contains a parameter. It describes what percentage of intervals from many different samples contains the unknown population parameter. Also, the confidence level has its corresponding coefficient, which is called confidence coefficients. These coefficients are used to find the margin of error. So, that's the confidence level and confidence coefficient. There are different confidence level. If you are testing for hypothesis, you need a confidence level or the margin of error. So, as you see here, the confidence level are usually 98, 99%, 98%, 96%. 95%, 92%, 90%, 85%, 80%, 75%, or in decimal, 0 0.70, 0 0.75, 0 0.80, and so on and so forth. And as you see here below, these are their corresponding confidence coefficient. So confidence interval. Confidence interval or interval estimate is a range of values that is used to estimate a parameter. This interval contains the parameter, but we don't know what the parameter is because the parameter is unknown. But we're just going to estimate the interval, which is where the parameter is. And also, this estimate may or may not contain the true parameter value. And these are different formulas that we're going to use in solving for the interval. And this one, this is the mean. The mean is between the lower limit and the upper limit. So the lower limit is equal to the, min, to the mean minus the margin of error, while the upper limit is equal to the mean plus the margin of error. And to solve for the margin of error, we have this confidence coefficient times the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. So to better understand this one, we're going to have some examples. So for the example number one, construct a 98% confidence interval for the population mean based on the information given. So we have this sample size that's 220, sample mean that's 91.1, and uh, the standard deviation that's 7.5. So first, solve for the margin of error. Using this formula, since the confidence level is 98%, so the confidence coefficient is 2.33, so we have 2.33 times the standard deviation, that's 7.5, divided by the square root of the sample size, that's 220. So to solve the margin of error, you can use your calculator and you will get 1.1782. So that's the margin of error. Then to solve the confidence interval using this formula, so for the lower limit, that's the sample mean minus the margin of error, we have um, 91.1 minus 1.178. Then for the upper limit, that's the sample mean plus the margin of error, we have 91.1 plus 1.172. So for, for the lower limit, it is 89.9218, and for the upper limit is 92.2782. So therefore, 98% confidence that the population mean lies within or between the interval 89.92 and 92.28. For the next example, example number two, a random sample of 800 students from a certain school yields mean GPA 
2.41 with a sample standard deviation 0.48. Construct a 92% confidence interval for the mean DPA of all students at that school. So first, we need to list all the given. So we have this sample size that's 100, so n is 100, then the sample mean that's 2.41. And we have this standard deviation that's 0 0.48. So to solve for the margin of error using the formula, since the confidence um, level is 92%, so the confidence um, coefficient is 1.175. So we have 1.75 times the standard deviation that's 0 0.48 divided by the square root of sample size that's 100 so again to solve for the margin of error you can use your calculator and you will get 0 0.084 so that's the margin of error then to solve for the confidence interval using this formula so for the lower limit that's the sample mean minus the margin of error we have 2.41 minus 0.084 then for the upper limit that's the sample mean plus the margin of error we have 2.41 plus 0.084 so for the lower limit it is 2.326 and, and for the upper limit is 2.494 so therefore 92% confidence that the mean of all student GPA on that school lies within or between the interval 2.33 and 2.49. Example 3, for the last problem, since the given is frequency table, so we need to solve first for the mean and standard deviation. So in this case, we're going to use a table for us to understand the distribution. So first, to solve for the mean, we need to find the value of f of x. So fx is the product of x and f. So that's 0 times 21 is 0. 1 times 9 is 9. 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times 7 is 21. 4 times 4 is 16. And 5 times 3 is 15. Then to solve for, for x minus the sample mean, since we don't have the sample mean yet, so we need to solve first this, this sample mean using this formula. So to solve for the summation of f of x, you need to add all these numbers. So that's 9 plus 12 plus 21 plus 16 plus 15, that's 73. So the summation of, of f of x, that's 73. The for the summation of f, add all these numbers. So that's 21 plus 9 plus 6 plus 7 plus 4 plus 3 is equal to 50. So um, to solve now for the mean, 73 divided by it's divided by 50. It's 1.46. So this is now the sample mean. So for it to, to solve this column, so we have this x minus the mean. So 0 minus the mean, that's negative 1.46. 1 minus the mean is negative 0 0.46. 2 minus the mean is 0 0.54. 3 minus the mean is 1.4. 54. 4 minus the mean is 2.54 and 5 minus the mean is 3.54 then we have this we have this the square root of this column so just take the square root of these numbers then then um, you will get these answers Then, to solve um, for the last column, that's f times x minus the mean squared. So, this column times this column. 
So you will get 44.73, 1.89, 1.74, 16.59, and 37.59. Then to solve for the standard deviation using this formula, so we have the summation of f times x minus the, the mean squared. So we, so we need to add these numbers. No? So we need to add this number, 44.73 plus 1.89 plus 1.74 plus 16.59 plus 25.8 plus 37.59. So that is 128.34. So the square root of 128.34 divided by summation of f, that's 50 minus 1. So again, to solve for the standard deviation, you can use your calculator and you will get 1.62. So that's the standard deviation. Now to solve for the confidence interval, these are the values. For the sample size, that's 50. For the sample mean, that's 1.46. And for the standard deviation is 1.62. So to solve for the margin of error using this um, formula, since the confidence level is 96%, um, so the confidence coefficient, that's 2. Point, um, so we have 2.05 times the standard deviation, that's 1.62, divided by the square root of the sample size, that's 50. So again, to solve for the margin of error, you can use your calculator and you will get 0 0.47. So that's the margin of error. Then to solve the confidence interval using this formula so for the lower limit or lower boundary that's the sample mean minus the margin of error margin of error we have 1.46 minus 0 0.46 then for the upper limit that's the sample mean plus the margin of error we have 1.46 plus um, 0 0.47 so for the lower limit, um, it is 0 0.99, and for the upper limit, it is um, 1.93. So therefore, 96% confidence that the average number of days absence of a students on, on that school is between 0 0.99 and 1.3.